What's up? Uh, one inch. So you shouldn't have something that looks kind of like this part over here. So, I'm sorry. A slot. So are there any other questions? And thank you for letting me know about that so we can start recording and sharing my screen. So this is good. So then the next thing that we'll do is we'll do, if you look right here, um, this part right here uh, is curved out. And it turns out there's a very handy feature uh, that we can use to do that. Um, that a geometric term for that is a dome. So we, there's actually a dome feature we can use. So if you go to insert features, this shows you other additional features than the icons just up here. So we're going to go to insert uh, features, and then we want dome. And then we want to dome this surface. And the height that we want to dome it should be given to us somewhere in here. Currently we're looking for a dome height. Should be something like from here to here. Um, I'm not seeing the dome height. So let's let's guess then. And then let me know if you see a dome height. But let's go ahead and just guess if it's one inch. Because one inch is a pretty good guess, I think. Thank you. Okay, possibly. So and then one other thing too, you can see that this dome looks different than the dome over here. One of those differences may just be that there's a difference in height. But the other thing too is we want to uncheck this continuous dome option and then it looks better. It looks anyways more like this. So uh, make sure that you have the continuous dome box uh, unchecked. The default is for it to be checked. Yeah, so good, exactly, yeah. And it looks like one inch is pretty close to what they have over here. And I really don't like just assuming that's one inch, but I'm not seeing any dimensions actually telling us what that height is from, from the top of the dome here to right here. So for the time being, we can just go ahead and assume that the height, maybe it's the same height as whatever this is, one and one. So we'll go with that. So we'll say, okay. And uh, now we have, um, our part that looks kind of like this. The next thing we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna hollow out this inside right here. And to do that, we're gonna use a feature, a new feature actually um, for us in this workshop anyways, and that's gonna be called shell. And you you typically use shell when you're hollowing out things like, like we're doing right here. So you can click the shell command right there and then you can click whatever surface you want to cut into. You can select multiple surfaces. In this case, we just want to have one open surface right there. And I'm going to click show preview. So show me what is hollowed out. And we can see right here, they give us this dimension. This dimension should be uh, an eighth of an inch, 0.125 to five inches. So we'll say, okay, and I'll confirm that. So just like that, then I have that, this part hollowed out. So, so far, hopefully not too, too bad. What were the parameters on the dome? Good question. So you just for the, your selection pick like the top surface, the height we're assuming is one inch and then uncheck the continuous dome option. This in the top plane? It doesn't really matter. The plane orientation doesn't All make right. a difference. So pick the surface, got it, and then What's the number again? Sorry. Just one, one inch. Instead of point one, change it to one. Correct. And then don't radius. The... You don't need a radius for the dome. Okay. So just one, and that's it. Well, and then uh, do you see this box down here called continuous dome? Make sure that that's unchecked. Oh, okay. Unchecked. Unchecked. Okay, and that's it. That's it. And then the next thing that you want to do is do your shell, and right. your shell feature will hollow out. The whole part that we have so far. And we're, we are we are already uh, making quite a bit of progress, but we still have a fair amount left to do. We have to do uh, the edge around the whole part, which isn't too terrible, but it's definitely more work to do. What, what dimension? 
put it for shell? Uh, that's actually given in the here. Look, look on the screen, Phil. No, can you read it now? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Point one two five. which is an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Yeah, this board is not. Your screen is not real clear. You know what? Let's try to fix that because we don't need that. Should be. That's better. That's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better. It eliminates the request. How do you use the shell manually? I've used this and I've forgotten. Okay, let me walk through that again. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's fine. And I think actually what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make SolidWorks full screen for right now. So let me uh, roll back that. Okay, so Phil, right now, do you have a part that looks like this? Yeah. Okay, so under the features tab, you have shell as an option right there, right? Shell. Yeah. So click that. And then what you select is the surfaces or surface in our case that you want to cut into. Okay, so the flat bottom. The flat bottom, exactly. Okay. And then, right. and then uh, for your thickness, that is really the only parameter that you uh, select. It's the thickness 0.125, does that go on D1? Uh, yes, it goes on D1. Okay, okay. So far, so good. And then if you'd like a preview, you can ask it to show you the preview by checking the show preview box. Yeah, it looks like it got it. It looks like it got it. And then whenever you're satisfied with it, you can press the green uh, check mark and yeah, say, okay. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. I was halfway there. And <laughs> it didn't work. Imagine that. Well, yeah, well, imagine that something's not working as if that's a first for today <laughs> or this whole workshop. Okay, so the next part is we're going to want to make uh, this part right here. And to do that, we're, we are going to use, well, okay, let me open it up as a question. Does anyone have any guesses for what we can do to generate this part right here? A sweep. A sweep, okay. So what would we need for our sweep? We need the cross section and the guideline, I guess, to be like the outside of the, the outside of the dome on the, on the bottom. Yeah, the, the part that's connected to the dome. I think I think we can actually use that outside edge as our path. We'll find out, we'll try that. But yes, for sure, we definitely need that cross section. So that'll be the next thing that we do. So for me, I'm gonna look for a plane. Actually, for me, the front plane looks like a good plane to uh, sketch and I just sketch that surface in like right here. Yes, this is a good one to do. So um, to do that, I'm just gonna draw uh, two lines, one at that, corner vertex and then we'll go right here and next i'm actually going to draw two circles because we have two arcs and i like to i prefer to work with circles myself but you can do this with curves or potentially even fillets but for me i find circles the easiest to work with and i lied i needed another line segment linear line segment so we're going to do that right there Well, for me, uh, the front view, but basically all you want is something that like that cross section would be in. So now I'm going to, and let me know, keep asking questions if anyone has questions. So I'm going to make a relation between there to make that tangent and then we'll do one right here to make that coincident. So, so it's actually touching. We're going to do another tangent and actually let me line this up to make this right. So we want this kind of to be small and then position somewhere around here. And we want this diameter to be a little bit larger. We're going to do tangent relation between those two. Uh, not quite going to work out how I want it to. Oh, maybe, I think that will actually. And then we're going to do a tangent relation between these two lines. Well, between, sorry, this circle and this line. We're gonna make that tangent. And then we'll go ahead and I'll make a, this coincident right there. And now I, I'm ready to start dimensioning things. So we have quite a few dimensions. So let's see here. From this edge to up here should be 0.5, half an inch. So should be 0.5. And sorry too if this is confusing. Um, I just realized that what I'm looking at right here is like 90 degrees 
who I'm working with over here. Um, that's something that you could just live with. Um, but if that's something that bothers you, there should be a way to rotate your view. Um, and it's just something I haven't done a lot of, but let me know if that's bugging anyone and we can try to figure out how to rotate that view. But for right now, uh, it doesn't bother me personally. So, and I'm not sure off the top of my head how to rotate the view, but let me know if you want me to try to figure that out, if it's really bothering someone. But anyways, from here, I'm going to give my uh, radiuses for my circles. So for this guy, okay, it's asking for the diameter. So my diameter should be 0.1 for the smaller circle. For this larger circle, it should be uh, 0.75. Okay, I see this is a bit of a problem. Um, it's not quite lined up how it should be, but we'll try to fix that. Okay, they don't give me that dimension. So that means that I need to change this. I need to undo and I need to somehow force <laughs> the smaller circle to be underneath. Okay, I think unfortunately the easiest way for me to do that is just to delete that circle and all the relations with that. So a little bit of backtracking I'm doing, but not the end of the world. Let's try this again. So I'm gonna draw a circle here I make it tangent and tangent. Your mind works really weird with geometry, but it's it's good. Thanks. I think that's a compliment. <laughs> it is. No, no, no. Okay, this looks good. So then um, we need a height right here. This height is showing it to be, okay, why are there two? Oh, I see. Okay, so we want to go a 0.203. For anyone that remembers that talk about uh, rounding issues with fractions, there's a chance this is some fraction rounded, but um, I don't know what fraction it would be, so we're not going to worry about that. So we'll just go with exactly what it tells us right there. So that looks good. From here, I'm actually ready to trim. So I'll trim that, trim that. What? Trim that. Oh, it doesn't like that. One thing I don't like, I think I might, no, not smart dimension. Let me see if I can get. No, okay, this is fine. This will work. Okay, so now we have most of our cross section. The last thing though I would want to do, it looks like there's this little channel right here too. So we would need to make that. That's actually pretty easy to make, should be pretty easy to make. That would belong right in here. So I'm just gonna draw a circle. What? What's wrong, Phil? You okay? Oh, nothing. I just got a result of like shocking. Nothing, nothing with me. It's my own thing. Yeah. yeah, every now and then. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, exactly what I asked you to do. <laughs> so it looks like that the distance right here should be 0 0.044. And then do we have, we do have a diameter or a radius anyways right here. So when we multiply that by two, it should be 0 0.0, uh, it's gonna be 92. That does, sorry, why is that very large? Oh yeah, I guess that's right. This looked strange to me at first, but that looks right. And then the center, of the circle to this edge right here should be 0.1. Oh no. Oh, I see. This is why. This right here, I need to make a relation to make that vertical. When I do that, okay, sweet. Everything is now fully defined. So that makes me more confident that this is right. So I think here I just need to trim up all that junk in there. So now, um, we, 
I have this fully defined cross section, which I believe is the cross section that we're looking at right here that we want to sweep around um, our whole part. At this point, it looks like Jack has given up. <laughs> okay. Lauren, how are you doing? I'm fine, I think. Are you trying to start working? Oh, okay. That's fine. You haven't made her now. Huh? You haven't made her now. I'm doing you know like circle cut up thing. Okay. I'm doing that, but I think that's fine because I can't. All right. How are people on Zoom doing? Oh my god. Oh, I should I forgot Phil. Phil, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm just okay. Yes, Peter. How are you? Yes, Peter. How are you? Yeah. Sorry, what? Yeah, I'm good. I'm following you now. Okay, cool. Do you have you so you don't have any questions? Yeah. Just... Okay, I'll assume that's fine. I don't I think you're good. I still need to get that little slot though. I'll uh Barra, you're you're doing good too, hopefully. Yeah, actually, I, I got stuff in the beginning, so I missed some in the beginning. So I'm just following through with you, and then I'll okay. catch up later. So I'm, I'm I'm following everything with you, but I haven't done it. So okay, no worries. I'll... No worries. I just realized, let me see what's going on in here. Okay, it looks like we're good. So I'm going to continue unless anyone has, seems like everyone doesn't have. Give me one second here. I'm almost, I'm, I'm okay. Okay, I'm okay. I'll wait, I'll wait. We're not in a rush. I'm putting the point one oh on. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm putting that. <laughs> All right. Well, little, so like, give me a thumbs up when you guys are ready, it, it ready to continue. It's almost like a little slot there, right? That that last thing you did? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I would call it a channel, but okay. uh, yeah, it's like half a slot, right? That cut into that. Yeah, what if we try to open it up like I guess you can see? Yeah. Let me see right here. What's the diameter? Zero, zero point zero nine diameter. Uh, oh, that's good. Point zero nine. Okay, I'm upside down. That's fine. No, that's fine. All right. I am. Yeah, point zero nine. Point nine two. Yeah. Um, quick question, Nor. One second. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Oh, just oh, here. What's up? Yeah. Um. Could you just uh, go over the steps you took for the small portion? The small portion right in here? Small portion right in here? Yeah, no, no, just the whole, sh the circles, this two circles, the big one and the, the small one. These two? These two? Yes, those two, yes. Sure. Sure. Um, so I think so it'll be easiest for me to redo those. To redo those. So basically, I'll, I'll explain it to you. And then if you want, I'll, I'll delete them and I'll redo them. Well, first I'll explain it. So um, first I drew out just two circles. I drew them roughly the right size and put them in roughly the right position. I wasn't too concerned about that. And then what I did was I made a tangent relation between uh, the two circles themselves. So they're tangent to each other. And then a tangent relation between the smaller circle and this line I had, I had just the vertical line right here. And then I also made sure that that vertical line was intersecting with that circle. A similar deal over here, I made the larger circle tangent to this uh, vertical line. I also made sure that the vertical line was was uh, intersecting or touching the circle. You can do that with a coincident relation between uh, the circle and that and both those lines. And then um, after I did, I drew out those circles and made those relations. I um, set the the diameters for the two circles. So the diameter for the smaller circle is uh, point is just point one inch, and then the diameter for the larger circle is uh, should be point seven five. Uh, let me see here. Well, the radius they, they give me the radius right here, which is half of point seven five point three seven five. Um, and then once I set those. Uh, Dimensions. Then I use the trim command to trim it out to look like this. Does does that help, or would you like to see me do that process? Do that process. No, no, it does help. It does help. 
Um, okay. just one more question. Um, did you have to shade the inside? Did I had to have to shade the inside? Yeah, to get the um gray look. Or did that come with it? I had to trim uh, out on the inside. That's what you mean. Is that what you hear? Okay. Um, cause um, I'm just wondering, like, um, the did you have to like shade the inside with the just like to get the gray part? I, I think it was white. Before. Oh, oh, you're talking about this? How uh, this is grayer in here? Yeah, the gray area. Yeah. So let me talk about that a little bit. I did not have to shade it in, but the area should be shaded in. What that means is, is that that's an enclosed sketch, which I want because I would need an enclosed sketch to do a sweep how I want to do. So if your area in here isn't gray, that means that somewhere there's a very small gap. And this is a problem that is pretty common. So typically what I'll try to do, if I've done invested a fair amount of work into the sketch like I have for this one, I zoom in in all the corners and I try to make sure there's no gaps um at any of the the nodes where there shouldn't be gaps and then there, if there is a gap i try to do some relation um like a coincident relation between the two the two endpoints to make them connect or something like that to close up the gap does that make sense so, does that uh, make sense yeah so basically an enclosed space you always need that yeah, you 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 don't always need that, but in most cases, like ninety five percent of cases, you'll need a closed area. Okay. Um, so all you just have to do is make sure there is no space all around, yeah. and then you get you get it closed. That's it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's all correct. right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Can can you can you go briefly how how you started from the beginning, uh, so maybe I can catch up. Sure. Tell you what. What I'll do is I'm going to exit the sketch and I'll do it on the other side. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. You can just show me the sketches from the beginning, maybe. Uh, oh, am I talking about the sketches like from back here? Yeah. So, so show me how, how everything went sure, through. Sure, sure, sure. Let's do that. So let me roll stuff. So I just um, rolled stuff back. So let me okay. show you this. This is sketch one that I did is mm -hmm. uh, th this slot right here. So you mm -hmm. have a slot command. So you can draw a slot mm -hmm. the distance from here to here is five inches. You got it. I got, I, I, okay. And then you, you, you did the extrude? Correct. Yes. And that is a distance of one inch. Okay. And then after that feature, um, I did a dome feature right here. And to do the dome feature, um, you can go to insert features and then dome is this option right here. Okay. Uh, select the top of your extruded feature, like mm -hmm. this right here. The height should be one inch. And then the other thing you need to do is uncheck this continuous dome, uh, little white box right here. Okay. Uncheck that, and then you're good to make your dome. And then you'll okay. get. This. Okay. Let, let me do these, and then I'll, I'll see. Okay. Sounds good. How are you two doing? Do you want help? Okay. Oh, is it not shaded? Yeah, you, you learn to be very picky. Somehow you have a lot of relations. Did you make all those relations manually? So I think that yeah. <laughs> Don't believe it. Just 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 drag it all the way over. 
Uh, yeah, see, that, it does that because you just get the relations. You can control Z and then you get your relations back. I'm not sure those may or may not help your case. So it looks like you don't have a smart image. Well, oh, yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Okay. So then go ahead and do um, click, click the endpoint there. Not the line itself, but the endpoint. Yeah. And then, yes. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. You're actually dimension. Oh, yeah. I was, uh, you were probably trying to dimension this right here. Yeah. So, so delete that one. Then. You want that one for like this edge or that edge. And then it's uh, exactly. I don't see a radius of this dimension. So. So just press this. Okay. Um, select that endpoint. Zoom out. Zoom in over here. Select that endpoint. Exactly. So, and uh, merge the points. This may go ahead and control Z. That's because you have everything in here is, well, not everything, but like this arc uh, that's in the line that arc that you need to be able to find. So include radiuses for those guys. You you learn to be very picky with how you're setting things up. So I don't know. So is there like smart versions? Yeah, smart versions are good and the way to go. There's a good chance I'm going to replay this sketch, and if that's the case, you could just try to follow along. Which sketch are you talking about? Um, this one. Okay. All right. Okay. How are people on Zoom doing? Can you show me the next step right after the dome? I can. Next step is a shell feature. So uh, you can find the shell uh, right here under the features tab, shell. And what you use the shell feature for is to cut out or hollow out parts. So when you do that, um, you'll select the bottom beneath your dome, that flat surface down here. That's the shape of the slot. And then uh, your thickness is point one to five inches. Okay, uh, can you can you show me how you read that from the uh, from the sure. drawing? Sure, sure. So if you look over here, this right here is a section section view, which is basically this part. If it was oh yeah yeah yeah, I see the point one two five. Okay, I see that. But yeah, how exactly. did you get the how did you get the dome size? The dome height. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think that's actually given on this. So we just yeah, I was it like was one inch. I try I tried to look for it. I couldn't find it. Yeah, I couldn't find it either. So this is a very valid point that you have. I think that somebody, what we did is we just assumed it was the same that we're doing for uh, this height right here. It okay. looks about right, like one inch here, one inch there, looks about right. So that's what we're currently going with, but that's an assumption that we're making. So okay. you're, you're not do. alone with that, with that question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me give this over. Sure, sure. Um, no, are we are we making a hard drive cover or what kind of drive cover? This is a drive cover, so I don't think it's a hard drive cover. Hard drive cover. I think it's more. Drive, I think it's more. Sorry, what? Sorry, what? Can Can you show me the next step? Yeah, sure. The next step is where the next several people are, and it's kind of complicated. But basically, what we're doing. Is we we are going to you see this little lip going around here? We're going to make that lip, um, which we're going to use a sweep feature to do that. So we have this detail. Right um, I I could do that. This is easy. I could do this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not so bad, but it's it's involved enough. Uh, so I think for Phil, do you want me to go through the sketch too? Yeah, no, I've I've got it. You do have it? Yeah. Oh, which one are you talking about? This one. No, I haven't got. I haven't gotten that. Have you done that one already? I have done that one. Check it out. Lauren's throwing a temper tantrum or something. I must be. Check it out, Phil. Right there. I have it. Yeah, I have that one. Oh, you do have this one. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Lauren, do you want me to do that one again? 
Okay. Um, okay. So you. So what kind of cover is it? Try. Other options too that you can do, right? Is you could do the diameter from the other side, like between that point and that point. Or there's two yeah. vertical kind of horizontal ones you do a vertical difference between them too. Okay. Just another way of doing the same thing. Do I need to do this I don't believe you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So all it works is picky sometimes. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, actually, unless yes, Peter, you have your hand raised. Sure, just, yeah, just one sec. Yeah. Um, what kind of what kind of um, drive cover is it? <laughs> Truthfully, I'm not sure. But let's see what the sure. drawing block the, tells us, which is down here. Made out of aluminum, 1060, aluminum alloy. It's to cover up something. My guess is it may be a pulley system that's like in here. Uh, it, actually, it could, it, more likely than a pulley, it would be like a, a chain and sprocket. Chain and sprocket is very possible. It could be gears. If it's gears, though, it's probably more than two gears because I don't think two gears would fit in here and mesh properly. They may. In fact, we can even test that that hypothesis uh, pretty easily if we just go to like this plane right here. What we could do is we can like just draw a cir two circles rather, uh, or we can do the math too. But we is I encourage people to use SolidWorks as a sketching tool at times to maybe just do things geometrically without the algebraic math. And then if you can confirm things uh, with algebraic math, you're that more confident that what you're doing is is accurate. So yeah, so if you have two uh, circular gears in here, it wouldn't be enough to mesh, but it's possible that there's like a third or even fourth or more gears in here to make this system work. So bottom line, I do not um, know with a, a certainty what type of drive cover it is, but it's a drive cover to protect some parts that are probably spinning. That's my best guess. Do you have any thoughts what it may do? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm just trying to figure out. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have a more definitive answer than that. Okay. So is anyone not happy if I continue on? Or should I? Does anyone want me to not continue right now and try to help with anything? I'm cool. You're cool. Yeah, you can watch. You'll watch. Okay. Everyone on Zoom is good if I continue at this point. What's the next question? You can go ahead. I'll, I'll ask if I. Uh, yeah. Sure. Just, 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 thank you. Yeah. The next step for us to do our sweep. Okay. So we'll try to do that. So we'll go to features. I'm going to try it without drawing out a sketch for my path. So we're going to say sweep. And for our cross section, we're going to select this sketch. Then for our path, we're going to select, let's see here, let's select this edge. Okay, this almost works, but not entirely. Okay, in that case, that's not going to work. So um, let me see here. When I, oh, this is a good question. When I, Hey, how about this? Okay, check this out. This is a great opportunity to me, for me to show you guys another trick you can do. So this is actually worth watching. So hopefully most of this is, uh, most of this all works stuff anyways. So I have the sketch one right here that I used for this uh, Boss Extrude one way back when this was the first sketch I made, sketch one, right? And if I look at sketch one, uh, this lines up with where I want my sweep to go around that outside. So that means that I'm going to use that as my path for my for my sweep. So we're going to go sweep. 
we're going to select uh, sketch two for a cross section. And then for our path, we're going to go drop this down and recycle sketch one. And then we're good to go all the way around. So I'll say, okay, with that. Then I have that right there with the channel and everything. Another way too, that by the way, um, is you could like, if you want that sketch to be less complicated, a little bit less complicated, uh, you could also come back and just do a sweep cut. There's also a sweep cut feature somewhere in here. Sweep cut, and you can like sweep cut out the channel or maybe like a curve up here or something. But in my opinion, I I prefer to have just a single complicated sketch than two somewhat complicated sketches. But you know, for other people, that may be a different story. So does that make sense? What? Okay. We'll see. That actually does make sense, but cool. You move fast. There really? On the, on the explanation. Really? Yeah. I think I know what you did. I think you used. Oh, it works. Yep. Yeah, I know what you did. It <laughs> worked. Didn't think I was moving fast. Well, and you're on the explanation of the. Um, but that's a jump for me. You know, going from clicking on the line to going to the list, the feature design tree. Going to the sketch, clicking on the sketch, and it took. You know what I'm talking about? That's a different, that's a little bit, a little bit of a conceptual jump. Uh, Whereas if I'm just clicking on a line, I know it's like, oh, it's this line. Yeah, yeah. I so tried I that at I first. I know why you did it. It made it continuous all the way around. Exactly. Whereas before it wasn't. You know, we're having uh, misfortunes occur when you try to sweep it, right? Well, at first, but then yeah. just take a step back and try a different approach. Yeah. Well, it's a good approach, but I mean, there is a little bit of a jump there. I, I, I know what you did. You went to the design tree. Yep. Yeah. At this point, by the way, it's good practice to save things periodically. So, so in case the unfortunate uh, happens and you lose your stuff, so which crashes and you use, lose all your work, that wouldn't be good. I have actually had a student before email me frantically in a midterm. Like, hey, my computer crashed, restarted, it, lost all my work. Not a fun email to either type out or read. Um, so this is going to be direct. Terrible. I mean, that's heartbreaking for people. I've seen it. Yeah. I saw eight sure. hours of work go up in smoke one time. Yeah, it's not a good thing. Would not recommend. Okay, the good news from here, we really have um, not much work left to do. We have like two more things to do, two more features actually, and we can finish this whole part. But I don't want to just keep rushing if um, people want to try to follow along. So Phil, you're with me. Yeah. How are people on Zoom doing? How are you guys doing? I'm catching up. <laughs> sure. Catching up. Okay. Sounds good. Do you have your hand raised, Peter? You currently have your hand raised. Currently have your hand raised. No, no, I'm good. Yeah, I mean, I will pull my hand down. Okay. Sounds good. Lauren, how are you doing? Okay, let me see if I can. Do you want me to try to help? Okay. As long as you have a smart connection, you know how to smart so the smart dimensional is that what I'm doing. That's not messing around. It was keeping it locked Well, you, it's not the, you, you don't do a smart connection to do a relation. It's just. Um, what would be the next? Uh, so select your circle. It's like it's fully defined. I'm not sure. Okay. I think I know. I think what, what I would do, this is what I'm trying to do, I don't know if it's going to work, is it's like this, hold down control, and try to do the same thing. I wouldn't do this to see that all break, right? Oh, I think I know what I might have done. What do you think? I put it right from the connected down here. Yeah. So it can't, how do I get rid of that? Yes. Yes. 
So see now how it's words and not words applying that. Yeah. So that's we call that and our guy yeah, that's called the quadrant of the circle. It's kind of like the circle plus one corner. Yeah, I thought it was Yeah, it's an assumption. Yeah. You learn to not make you learn to make as few assumptions as you can. Go you have to see. I'm excited. I think I think it's okay. Okay. So Lauren, are you good if I keep going? Or do you want me to try to catch you up? Uh, that you're trying to over define something because it just plays it. What were you trying to do? I was trying to define something. Oh, uh, yeah, you don't have a line in. Do I need to know? Uh, actually, wait, sorry. It may be the same issue that they were having in the last year. Go ahead and drag it and see what's on this one. Yeah, click and drag it in the middle. Oh, yeah. So you don't have for some reason this machine and then the way that you can make it. You can have this one. Go ahead. Potentially. Another thing that you could do, you could do it from like this vertical horizontal line to there, and then do subtract off the raise to that. Um if if like you know, if the argument didn't use it, but go ahead, yeah, go ahead. That should be. You know, you shouldn't, you know, uh, line between there. You should be able to do a tangent. You see how the circle that's is still not fully defined? If you do a tangent, there shouldn't be any value. It's not just a tangent. Yeah, the two the arguments are kind of there. Everything. Are you happy? Is that fine? I mean, you saw what I did. Yeah. You want me to undo that? You can redo that. No. no. Okay. I'll let you turn it down. Okay. And then um, do, do the sweep and let me know if you need to do the sweep. So I'm going to continue on, and I'm going to try to explain slowly my thought process for the next steps. Next, there's two steps left. Let me ask you this. Sure. What, what are we headed for? The holes? The yeah. Holes the holes are all we have left. Okay. So I'll open it up actually as a discussion question. Um, does anyone have any suggestions? I know what I would do to finish this off, but um, I don't want to just you know be saying everything that we do. I mean, I, I'm Can happy. Again? Yes, please do. A center line going around the exact path where those holes are, okay. the centering holes. Okay. And then use that center line and a pattern that follows the center line. Yeah. Is that how you do it? Well, that's how you do it after you generate the hole, the first hole, right? Right, right. Yeah, this is good. That that, that would work. There's a shorter way, a slightly shorter way. Okay. I think we can recycle sketch one again, and it will be like an offset um, line pattern or offset path uh, pattern. Pretty sure we can do that. So we'll try that. If that doesn't work, we'll default uh, or we'll default to what you just said because that's. You might have to free up the line using that um, change entities. You know what I'm talking about? And then potentially the feature. We'll see. The outside of the feature then becomes a line also. You yeah. Oh, I think you're thinking of convert entities. Convert entities. Yeah. yeah, that's the one option we could do. Uh, it's pretty easy also just to sketch a new uh, slot shape too. But yeah, okay. again, that, this boils down to there being lots of ways of doing the same thing. Yeah. So do you have any suggestions for how to make that hole? Because there's- How to make what? The, one of the holes, we need to make one of these holes before we can pattern it, correct? Well, you take one of the easiest ones, it's on an axis. Sure, and then what do you do? What feature? Or features. What's the hole look like? Can you show me the hole? Is it just a counterbore? It has two diameters. It's a counterbore. 
So you draw, you could draw a counterbore and then use the pattern. You draw a counterbore and then you could extrude cut and then use pattern in the feature. So how many extrude cuts do you use? Uh, you could do that. I guess you could do that in two, or you could draw. There's a way to draw a counterbore. It was one step. I forget, but it would take me a minute to remember that. But you could do that with two also. You could do it with a, you know, the, so the set depth and then all the way through, you know, the smaller diameter. You could do it that way. You could do it that way. So, yeah. There's so, an easier way. What is it called? Is it whole wizard? Whole a wizard. whole wizard, yeah. Um, there's, I mean, we could do that, but then that, um, again, like you, I don't remember how to do that exactly <laughs> but however i know a way to do it with the simple tools um okay. and with one feature and one sketch so yeah. I'll, so so we know how to do it for sure with two um, oh are you going to do it with a uh, revolve you're going to do a revolve cut we can do the whole thing with a single revolve cut exactly okay. is that how you're going to do it that's my plan okay. <laughs> so that's what i'll do then All right. um, does that make sense to people on zoom if we use, we can do two extrude cuts to cut like uh, these two, uh, well, this one hole with two different diameters, or we can do a revolve cut to cut uh, the whole thing in one go. Does that make sense? I'll assume silence is, is a yes. Thumbs up. Okay, cool. Let's take it. Thank you. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Lauren, did you get the sweep to work or no? No. Okay, I'll help you if you don't get it by the time uh, we get this part done. So I'm going to go to, oh, that's good. Okay, so we're going to come over here and I'm going to do um, a hole right here. So to do that, I'm first going to draw, I'm going to draw a line. Again, I usually don't do this, but I guess I do this more and more, the more I use SolidWorks. I'm going to draw a line for construction and we're just going to draw something oh actually i may not want this to be for construction i may take that back there's a good chance i'm going to take that back but we'll see here um so now this is i think that those are all the lines i'll need i may change this out back from not construction but first let me try to mention this how i want so let's see here this is going to be a little bit tricky because from the, what it's showing is from this inside edge back here to uh, to the center right here. We know what that distance is. So actually let's use another tool first. I'm gonna select the front plane. I'm going to do a section cut with this, like this. And this just helps me so I can see things better. So now I'm going to zoom in. And now I believe that I'll be able to easier or more easily select, uh, maybe, maybe not, that point right there. Oh, no, not the diameter. Why would that be the case? Mm. OK, I can always do math to solve this issue. But I'm, what I'm trying to do is avoid math. But if I need to, I'll, I'll bite the bullet and do the math. Are you laughing at what I said or no? Okay, I think I'm going to bite the bullet and do the math. So actually, oh, I think it's not even bad math. So we're going to do 0 0.5 minus uh, 0 0.3125. So it's going to be 0 0.1875. So that's not bad math at all. I don't know why I was afraid of that. It's late at night. I got three encounters with the police, which is three more than I usually do. Oh, I could have done that as a as a just a point point one eight seven five. Hey, what's that? Oops. Point one eight seven five. What is that? Oh man, why isn't this working? 
This is giving me more issues than I thought it would. Are you going from the outside edge to the center line? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I'm going to try to do that too, okay? Sure. It worked for you, it didn't work for me. <laughs> I'm glad it worked for you though. So now, oh boy. Yeah, it worked. It the whole thing. Yeah, cool. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, for some reason it's not letting me select that and I'm not happy about that. <laughs> but, oh well. So let me try it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. But see then, I don't think, that, yeah, my construction line is not fixed how you would think it would be fixed. <sighs> Oh, it's frustrating. Okay, let me dimension everything else that I can dimension. So let's see here. I think they tell me, oh yeah, they do right here. So they give us the dimensions right here. So remember that we're going from diameters to radiuses when we do this. So the smaller one, I, I don't feel like doing the math or I don't trust the math in my head right now. So we're gonna pull out the calculator. 0.18. Five, two. Yeah, you know that. You can just put that in there. It has an automatic. Oh, really? I could just do it. It has an automatic calculator. 0.1875 slash two will give you the right. Okay, we'll use that for the next one. Thanks, Phil. So what Phil is saying is I could just take this line right here. And I can actually do this math in my head, but let's use the calculator if it's built in. Nice, I like that. Didn't know that, thank you, Phil. And I don't know, let's see here. Oh, there we go. So distance. Do you have a question? Yeah, quick question. Um, actually, um, I was trying to do the sweep and uh, it's kind of not, uh, uh, allow me is just doing like just one section of the um, of that. Okay. It doesn't yeah. at all. So I think I have a solution for you. Uh, let me just finish typing out this number and then I'll I'll get back to you shortly here. Nice. Okay. Cool. So. So let me talk a little bit. Oh, I just realized I'm drawing this backwards, darn it. Okay, uh, let me exit this for right now though. And let me try to help with the sweep. So were you trying to select like the edges? Cause at first that's what I was trying to do. Like were you trying to select like this edge right here for the path? Yeah. Yeah, so what you um, look at your sketch one, what you could do is you could uh... recycle sketch one potentially for your path. Uh, okay. the, if you can't, you, you may not be, it depends on which direction you extruded your uh, extruded one. If you extruded it the wrong way, you won't be able to use it. If that's the case, you could redraw um, your slot shape there and then use that. that uh, so what's the wrong way? You went the wrong way? What's the wrong way? Up or down? Well, if it doesn't work, it's the wrong way. <laughs> huh? Um, if it doesn't work, it's the wrong way. Okay, let me try it. Sure, try it. And let me know if that doesn't work for you. No, basically, right. basically, let me try to explain uh, what I mean by the wrong way. So um, your extrude one right here, you're either going to go um, up this direction or down this direction. If you went down this direction, this sketch right here, let me roll everything forward now, would be like right here as opposed to where you would want it um, down here. Yeah. It would be up here then instead we, of yeah. then we can just create another sketch and uh, can I make it yes this is okay. the workaround if that's the if okay. that's the case then you just create another sketch i uh, know i went so. i went upward so i could use it okay cool okay let me go back and struggle with sketch four here so close in fact this is so close that i might just go to the other method where we do two circles two different sketches but i would rather do it with, with a single sketch at this point, Phil's going to beat me here. I'd be Try. beat. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing well, so you're safe. Yeah, for the time being, maybe. Oh, but one thing I did wrong is I 
wasn't careful with which one I was making larger. So let's see, this one needs to be the larger one. So it's going to be, That's not good. Just getting fell. These aren't depth. What's that depth of that? Well, for the small guy, we're given that. 0.125 is the depth? Correct. Mm -hmm. I had it upside down. I did too. Hey, there we go. There we go. We're getting it. 0.1875. Nice. Okay. Let me see if my revolve cut's going to work. Nope, it doesn't work. So that means I need to take this line. Yes, yes, it's not going to work. So I need to change this, not for construction. I lied before. And then I think I also need to trim up that. And maybe. Now that's all happy and enclosed. So we'll take this and we'll all cut. Okay, I think I have my first hole. And then uh, once we get our first hole, Lauren, did you get the sweep to work or no? Oh, yeah. You did? Okay, cool. So now we'll go to patterns and we're going to do, I think it's a curve driven pattern. Let's do a curve driven pattern. And for the direction, let's try to reference our uh, sweep one here. Hey, look at that. And then it tells us uh, in the prompt right here, we want 16 even equally spaced holes. So we want not 10, but 16 of those holes. And we'll say, okay. And that is the last step for this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, not quite the last step, I think it back a little bit, but it's the last part of, of 3D modeling. The next thing um, well, what that we can do is pretty easy. We can change the material type to be 1060 aluminum. We can, since it's asking it, we can uh, calculate the mass very easily. I'll show you how to do that. And then we can quick, we can easily change the height of our first extrude one and then recalculate the mass. I don't know if I can type in here. Can I type in here? I can't, so that's fine. Let me know if anyone has any questions for any step along the way here. I'm having trouble resolving. Yeah, it took me a minute to do that too, actually. Uh, can you show me the, the sketch for the, um, the screws? For the, uh, for the hole? The yes, hole? for the hole. Sure. This is my sketch for it. You just did it on the front, front plane, right? I did it in the front plane. And I'll tell you why I did that. Because um, when I look over here, we have these, um, we have middle. the hole right there and right there, right in the middle. Yes. And mm -hmm. my front plane cuts that right in half. Cuts mm -hmm. in half. So that's why I selected that. Uh, uh, yeah, you could also use the right plane too, right? I. <laughs> Well, I could oh no uh, okay I could I could I could because they put the right plane in the middle yes then you could you could do one of this like this hole or that hole definitely that would work too let me double check my map here and make sure I get this all right I'm happy we're doing this problem though. I like this problem. I think it's a pretty good problem. I can't get mine to resolve. How'd you how'd you do the pattern? What did you use as your um, guideline? Sketch one. Oh, okay. So it works. Okay. All right. Mine's not. I've got something maybe undefined. Maybe there's no blue, but something's wrong. Okay. Uh, let me quickly ask on Zoom. Does anyone have any questions right now or no? I'm good. Okay. Peter, are you doing well? Okay. I'll assume Peter's doing well. 
I'm going to go first. I'll turn on the lights, then I'll try to help you out, Phil. There's mine. So why do you think it's not right? Well, I think it might be this. I think this, this is just the center line. But I'm not sure. You tell me. I think I've got the the. Is there a ball not working? Yeah. All right. It's this one. But you know, I think I've done something wrong. Look, it's close. Look, 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 it's close. Yeah. It's wanting to do it. Let's turn that off. The center line looks like it's undefined. Um, yeah, if the length is undefined. Oh, okay. I think, are you kind of going to leave it? Yeah. Oh, then I think that Because that was what your dimension is. Let me give you that definition. You can undo it. I could undo it. You can do this. Okay. Oh, and then you don't have this. So you need a dimension right here. So this is. That's right. Oh, yeah. So now it's all defined again. Yeah, you should make it a ball chart. I'm going to have to go back and make a mistake. Oh, look, it looked like it did something. Oh, yeah, you have a You have it. So you have somehow it works. You may have already had it. So, oh, God. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> okay, so now I have to do the sweep. No, the pattern. Oh, pattern. Okay. Yeah, I'll try. Let's so occur through a pattern using tech one. Tech one. All right. Tech, are you there? Okay. I'm, I'm just kind of like watching a little bit what's going on. It's hard for me to talk about. Do you have any questions or no? Um, nothing as of yet right now. Um, I think I just kind of need to review some of the test plots. So I'm still kind of like, I'm trying to like catch up. I thought I, I might try to take him through it, you know, like next week. Yeah, that'd like be, Tuesday. That'd be I good was, practice for you. I, I was like in a meeting with Bill and Well, I hope you didn't. Yeah. The practice doesn't hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. Absolutely. Well, let's see if I can get this. Oh, you're doing it right. I feel like I'm already going to start okay. getting home over the thing. Yeah, that's what I'm actually in dynamic. Okay, pattern. Curve driven pattern? Yep. You know what? It's a hard course, but it's a very good course. Really hard, but okay. Yeah, it's a good course. Up one is an awesome professor. One of our best professors. So it's sketch one. Where's sketch one? Is Under extrude one and also your oh, one. Uh, sweep okay, one. Okay, there's the sketch. And then how many how many are there? Sixteen in case space. Sixteen. Okay. Spacing and then D1. What's D1? I guess it doesn't count in this. It doesn't count. Okay, and then features of faces, just pick the hole. Uh, pick the revolve cut. So, cut revolve. Okay, cut revolve. Yeah, yeah. and is that it? That should be it. So, you should be good to. I mean, it'll uh, probably give okay. you. Give You're you right. Oh, no, it only got it only got. Three of them. Yeah. <laughs> I messed up. Okay, I'll look at this. You, you don't mind if I look at it, right? No. Now, what'd you do? <laughs> I click edit feature. This looks right. Oh, my. Yeah, where? Wait a second. Wait a second. What's offset? So you see, no, 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 this is the problem. So you have an offset here. So uh, offset curve. There you go. All you had to do is select offset curve, not transform curve. And oh, do that. okay. So that was the issue there. So the preview was showing them. However, it was showing them offset. Okay. You know, where you were, you were looking them. So for some reason, that option was already checked for me. So turns out that if you have that issue, um, let me show the people on Zoom in case they have a similar issue. So it turns out that when you're doing the uh, curve pattern, 
that you should make sure that you have the offset curve um, box selected as opposed to the transform curve uh, so that your holes go where you want them to. It, this is if you're using sketch one again um, for your curve, for your, for your pattern. Say again. There's so many little details like that in SolidWorks. Oh, that's, that's where the, the devil's in the details. <laughs> that's I mean, why people get paid a lot of money for this sort of thing. Struggle, struggle, struggle. And finally, you figure out, you know, me, it would take me an hour. And finally, you figure out <laughs> it's this. And it's like, oh. You got to be curious. You got to be nosy and figure out, like, why is this the way it is? And yeah. You start to get, I mean, okay, this sounds really corny, I guess. But you get a feel for SolidWorks kind of in these programs and you get a feel for them and you think, oh, yeah. okay, why is this happening? And if you can figure out the root cause of it, then you're more likely to be able to figure out a solution for it. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay. Let me save this. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that we, that I got this one down and you got it. And I think that has anyone on, on Zoom um, gotten everything completely done yet? Yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Did oh, did you make the part complete? Did you make the part complete? No, I'm just listening. Has just you... listening. Okay, that's fine too. Okay, that's fine too. I am I'm just open and waiting for questions. Because uh, right, right now we have eight minutes left officially. So I don't think we really have time to start something else. Um, but if we can get more people to finish. Unless, I mean, because the thing is, is like, we can rush through something else in the last eight minutes, but I don't know how productive that would be. Um, if you guys want me to go and do that, I'm happy to do that. But it's, um, it's up to you guys. So Phil, do you want me to try to rush through something else? Okay. Whatever you want, I, at 722, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm happy to rush into something else, but I, I'll just realize I'd be going very quickly. Like, I wouldn't be stopping asking for questions. I'd be just be rushing to get something I'll done. Watch. You'll watch. <laughs> okay. I'm slow. So, Jack, how would you feel about that? I think I'll be okay. You think you'll be okay with that? I can, I can review this too. Um, uh, one thing I did want to ask you, and uh, I don't mean to block him, but just are you? No, I'm not. Yeah, no. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Once I figure all my office hours out. Uh, let me see. So how uh, the people on Zoom, would you like me to try to rush through another problem uh, with the remaining time? Oh, um, well, yeah, you could go for it. Let's go for it. Go for it. Lauren, are you good if I turn Lauren to rush you something else? Okay, let's do it then. So let's see here. Let me close something. It's going to be like a speed run. And we'll see. This may not work, but we'll try something. So we actually don't have, what is Windows telling me? I don't care if OneDrive is inside there. I don't want OneDrive. Okay, let's see here. So. Let's not, let's not do a drawing. Let's do, we did that, we did that, we did, well, we didn't do that one, but that one takes a lot of time. Let's do a limit distance mate. It's gonna be an assembly. So I'm gonna create a new assembly. And we're just gonna open up the files and we'll see, and I'll talk about limit distance mate. So actually that's what we did at the end of last time. We did a limit angle mate. So I think it's not a bad idea to do limit distance. Okay, so this is, turnbuckle? yes, exactly, this is a turnbuckle. So in theory, actually this would have threads and this would thread in here and there, there would be another one and you would use this for tightening or adjusting something like a cable or just uh, metal rods. Uh, very common, uh, even like with things like uh, older airplanes um, anywhere where you have cables or rods. Uh, Phil, do you know other examples where they would use turnbuckles? I'm trying to think. Um, anywhere where you have 
cable length where you want to be able to tighten it up, you know what I mean? Yes, you yeah. Turn that thing with a crescent wrench, you know what I mean? It tightens it up both sides at once. Yeah, so you may start off with like a cable going through here, cable going through yeah. here, and then you can tighten these up. So that's that's what the function of this would be. So I just did uh, two concentric mates to line this up. And what I want to happen is I want this guy to be able to slide all the way until it like would start, well, to the midpoint and then maybe all the way out to like, so that this surface is flat with this surface. And then I want that same behavior uh, mirrored up here uh, for this pin. So I have currently uh, the frame fixed in the two, uh, two pins are floated. Um, so if you go to mate, and this is an advanced mate, and we're going to do a limit distance. And we're going to, actually, before I do this, sorry, I need to take a measurement. So to do that, we can do evaluate, measure, and we can select this surface. I'm going to measure the distance between that surface and this surface, surface normally. So the normal distance between those two normal distance Oh, it's probably something in inches. So let me change my units to inches. And when I do that, darn it, I have to reselect the surfaces. <laughs> Come on, that surface, this surface. Normal distance, 9.75 um, inches. So now I'm ready to go in to my mates, advanced mate, limit distance between this surface and this surface. And we want. The maximum distance to be 9.75 divided by two. And the minimum distance just to be zero. And that's all I want to do right now. And then what should happen is that should make this free to go from there to there. And that's working. So sweet, that's good news. Uh, let's see here, something else. Um, I could re easily repeat the same thing with this part over here. However, um, there's a quicker way of doing that. Uh, the thing I'm going to do to make it quicker is I'm just going to actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this part altogether. I actually don't need that pin. And I'm just going to mirror uh, this component about, and I'm assuming right now, so components to mirror, let's mirror this pin. And then I need a mirror plane. And we're going to look for a plane, top plane in the frame. Assuming that's right in the center of that of this frame, this should work. And we'll say okay. And when I do that, now we have this guy right here. And these parts now move in and out together. And their distance is limited between the center of the frame and uh, just so that the bottom of the pin goes flush with uh, the the inside of the frame on both both pins and the frame. And then since this is a turnbuckle, we can also do, we learned about screw mates last time. So we can do a screw mate if we'd like to too. This, <laughs> so since this is mirrored, we're gonna have right-handed threads and left-handed threads, but that's that's fine. Uh, so the thread, the gear mate, or sorry, screw mate rather, if I was saying gear, I apologize. Uh, we want screw mate between here and here. This is by the way, somewhat redundant with the, um, with the, uh, concentric mates, but that's okay. So now if I screw this, it behaves kind of like a screw. Both of them do. And then if I want to be really fancy, this might take me a second, but I can try to add in SolidWorks motion. And with the remaining minute, I can try to do a motion study. So let's go here, let's do motion analysis. Let's do a linear actuator. Oh dear, before I do this, I should be careful and make sure that things are lined up in a way that I know how to deal with them. Oh, come on. Ah, good enough. Let's go here. And to update the position, I'm going to create a new motion study. Motion analysis. Linear actuator or linear motor for this guy. And we want uh, oscillating. The distance is going to be 0.975 by two thanks for the trick fill and we'll say okay and we will go ahead and we'll calculate that and oh oops that's not right let me fix this i was wrong 9.75 by two let's do that now calculate okay there we go so there's a motion study with some motion for our turnbuckle so I can play that. 
And our um, workshop has come to an end. I hope it's been um, educational for you guys and that hopefully you know um, at least one new thing about SOLIDWORKS that would be a good thing, or at least one thing, hopefully more than one new thing. Uh, I've enjoyed teaching. Uh, I've enjoyed. Sorry for all of the craziness. Um, we didn't have one day that went smoothly. Yesterday was the closest we had, but even yesterday we had issues, but uh, we did the best that we could with, with the uh, situation uh, that we uh, faced, so. Oh, uh, it was it was all awesome. Uh, it was very worth it. All the craziness for sure. And um, thank you very much, Noah. You're welcome. I really like how you carry us along. So yeah, we learned a lot from this. It's been awesome. It's been wonderful learning. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I'm teaching. Uh, if you're, I think you, most of you guys are in the ME program. If you need to take ME 26, I'm teaching it this semester. There's currently openings uh, both uh, Monday, Wednesday, and also Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, if if you want to take a SolidWorks course, uh, that's an option uh, this coming semester. And we'll go through things much slower in the in the in the class than this. Half the semester roughly will be spent going on going through uh, a little bit more material material than we just covered here. So we kind of did half a semester's worth of material in a week, roughly, is what we just did right now. So are there any, uh, are there any uh, final questions? You said you'd be teaching where again? Uh, yeah, I'm teaching uh, ME 26 this next semester at Fresno State. All right. Um, well, can can you? Uh, I really appreciate your your teaching. It was awesome. But uh, I, I uh, can you uh, upload or send to me the file because I wasn't able to finish it completely. I had some a little issue. Can you send me your file for the previous one? For the previous one, yeah, sure. I'll send you that. Um, let me let me stop sharing and actually let me stop the recording.